Now I'm going to do one more. We'll do one more object real quick. I'll make another layer and I'll call this bat and we'll make a bat. And this one again doesn't have to be really good. And I'll go on this first keyframe and this time I'll use my paintbrush again and I'll make a little bat. I'll make it smaller. Now you could zoom in if you like. If you want to zoom in a little bit more, I could zoom in up here that, or you could draw a big bat and then make it smaller. But I'll go over here and make a little bat and I'm just going to do it right on my bat layer and I'll just do something. It doesn't have to be really good. I'll just kind of do something like that. Again, I'm using my my finger on a trackpad, so it's not really, I'll just almost do like a little Batman. I mean, it's white right now, so let me make it black. I'll fill that in with black and I'll fill this part with black. And that's not a very good bat. If you want to take the eraser and kind of fix it up a little, you can fix it up, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be moving around. So I'll just kind of trim off a little there. Not a very good bat, but again, I'm just using a trackpad, so it's hard to draw this stuff with a trackpad on a laptop. But, but anyway, that's my bat, as good as I got my bat right now. And I'll do the same thing. You can see it's kind of that, we drew it like an object, so I'm gonna highlight it, or it's all selected right now, so I don't have to re-highlight it. And I'm gonna right click and convert it to symbol. And that's so we could do that tweening. You can't do tweening with just an object the way we painted it. So you have to do this step. I'll just call it bat. And there's my bat symbol. So what are we going to do with a bat? Now let me zoom out a little bit and we could do the same thing. Just kind of move it around a little bit. I'm going to start it off screen. And then what he'll do is he'll kind of, and I'll make it a little smaller because it's a bat and it's in the sky. Scale it on a diagonal a little bit. You could hold shift to make sure it's in proportion. So there's my bat. And again, I'll make, I'll do it like the ghost and I could do it every five frames. I'll kind of make a keyframe and do the F6 key. If you're on a laptop, you might have to hold the function, but on a computer, just do the F6 key and move the bat over here. And then one thing you could do right here is actually, I'm gonna do a couple frames. He kind of came out here. I'm gonna make him kind of flap his wings for a while. So he's gonna start right here, or you can make him move over here. Maybe I'll make him move over here. Um, let me just see something. I don't want the ghost to be in the way. Um, I'll have him start here, wherever he starts on, that, on this keyframe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyframe. I'll click here. Make sure you don't have everything highlighted. Just, I'm just going to go right, right next to this frame, and I'm going to do a F6. And I'm going to squeeze him in with this transformation tool so he looks like he's flapping his wings. I'll squeeze him in, and then right next to it, I'll make another keyframe, and I'll squeeze him out, or I'll stretch him out by using his middle handle. So I'll do a couple of those in a row. where I kind of make a keyframe, I squeeze them in, and I notice I'm making a keyframe one right after the other, and then I make another keyframe. You have to make the keyframe first before you change anything, and you can see what's happening here. He's gonna come here and he's gonna kind of flap his wings a little, and I'll do it a couple, t couple more times. I'll do F6 and squeeze them in, and I'll go to the next frame and do an F6, add another keyframe and squeeze them out. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll go to like 15 and I'll add another keyframe. You always have to add a keyframe whenever you want to change it. And I'll move them over here and maybe I'll make them bigger. And maybe I'll rotate them around a little bit. And then maybe I'll make another one over here and I'll do an F6. And I'll rotate them the other way and I'll move them over here and then maybe I'll make one more at the end, and I'll do an F6 again, and I'll move them over this way, and maybe I'll rotate them. Now again, every time I rotate them and scale them, I have to be on this transform tool. Otherwise, you could just use your selection tool to move them around. So let's see what we have. Now this is all happening at the same time, and I'll just kind of just hit my playhead right here, and there's my bat. Now the, you don't see the, the bat doesn't really look like he's doing much. Let's test our movie. I'll do command return. That's the shortcut to make the SWF. There's the bat. You see him flapping and he kind of disappears. He doesn't look good. And that's because we don't have tweening done. So we're going to do the same thing. Click on the bat layer so all these frames are kind of highlighted. And, and at any point in here, you could just kind of right click and choose classic tween. And now the bat should look a little better. And he's kind of flapping and moving around just real quick. And, and now the only thing that's different here is they're happening at the same time. It'd be nice to kind of stagger them. So 
maybe I'll have the, you, you could have either the ghost start and then you can have the bat come in. So maybe I'll have the bat happen later since we did that second. The way to do that is actually click on the bat layer and you probably want to do this in one shot because if you mess this up it could be a problem so just do it in one. If you mess it up I guess you could undo it but if you just click on the bat layer and you, all these frames are selected the best thing to do is just grab onto it and drag it. Click and drag in one step. Don't try to move one frame. Just drag it down and I'm just going to stagger it so it starts right about there. So maybe it goes to like frame 60. So that Now the problem is is when you play it, you see the ghost, then the bat comes in, except the house isn't there. That's really easy to fix. All we have to do is go on the house layer, go on this last frame, and do an F5. And what that'll do is fill in the house so that the house exists for 60 frames. And that way the, the, ghost, the ghost animation goes for like 30 frames, and then the bat animation goes for the other 30 frames and it makes basically a I guess a four second movie if we're at 15 frames per second so if I do command return or control test movie however you want to do that this is the final product there's my bat moving around so that's something called tweens classic tweens in flash and it's basically a way of animation where you kind of make keyframes you make changes to a certain object and then the tweening makes all the in-between frames. So it does all those frames that are in between that we did not do. We only made a frame, we only made a change here and a change here. And Flash did all the in-between frames and that's called tweening. And we did the same thing with the bat, although this didn't require tweening because we just kind of moved it back and forth. So that's almost what's called keyframe animation where you just change it every time. That's kind of standard animation where you just kind of change it per frame. It's a lot more it's a lot more work to do things like that. So anyway, that's all you need to do. And you could save this. And if you want to test it one more time, because it always it generates a new SWF file, I'll do command return, or you could do control test movie. And just make sure you see it one more time and it looks good. And that looks really nice. And there's other things we could do. We could do lightning. We you know, had plans to do lightning. You could add ghost noises and things like that and then make sure you have your SWF even go on your desktop go in that folder there's your SWF this file here and th what you want to do with that because you can't upload that to eLearning or to my warn you can't upload an SWF file and you don't want the FLA you want the SWF you want to control on a Mac you could control click on this and do compress and then it's gonna make a zip file it's gonna put a dot zip extension this is the file that you're gonna upload and send that in with that exercise so make sure you send that in. So if you get a chance to do this on the Mac, you could do that right from the Mac. You could launch Chrome and you could go into My Warrant and do that. That's the exercise 14. If you need to make that up, whether you do that in the Mac lab or whether you do that on your own computer, if you have a, access to Flash, you could do that as well. So that's exercise 14. And you can, when you're done in Flash, you can close the file. I'm not in Flash, so I gotta click on the window. I'll close the file and then I'll do Flash quit and that quits the application and you're all done. So again, just make sure that this zip file is the one that you upload.